Hey, this is my comic pool list for April 27, 2016. First off, it's Bill and Ted Go to Hell number three. So in the last issue, Napoleon beat death at a game of chess and found out how to get into heaven. A lot happens in this issue. Um, it's not as funny, but definitely action-packed. Looking forward to seeing how things get wrapped up in the next issue. Next, it's Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files Wild Card issue number one. Now this is based on the book series, which is also written by Jim Butcher, which I started reading at the beginning of the year. I'm currently on book number five, Death Masks. Um, I had kind of a love-hate relationship with uh, this book series. So far, they've all taken me a big chunk of the book to get into the story, but by the middle or so, the rest goes pretty quickly. I haven't read this first issue yet, but I'm hoping it doesn't follow suit. Next up, it's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number six. In the last issue, Lunella busted Devil Dinosaur out of his jail at the Natural History Museum. In this issue, the pair confronts the killer folk, bringing the story arc to a close with a bittersweet ending. Talk about a cliffhanger, woof. And if the final panel doesn't get an awe out of you, you have no heart. As I've said before, this is an awesome comic, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Next, we have Sex Criminals number 15. Finally, another issue. <laughs> and a lot of filler in it. Um, but some major points are hit on, and the ending has me intrigued for the next issue. Hopefully, we won't be left dangling for several more months. Next is Outcast number 18. Now, Mark comes home from the hospital, and Sydney sets his plan into motion. Great ending, but now we have to wait until July to find out what happens. In the meantime, I'm really looking forward to the June premiere of the Showtime series. Can't wait to see how they adapt this for TV. Next, it's Micronauts, issue number one. The f a Micronaut, you might ask? Well, they were a series of sci-fi action figures made by Mego in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, I had a few back in the day because I'm a dinosaur. They were distinctive because instead of the five points of articulation that most figures had back then, arms, legs, head, they actually bent at all their joints. And they had interchangeable parts. And they had cool names like Time Traveler, Space Glider, and Galactic Warrior. And since they were three and three fourths inch scale, they fit with my Star Wars action figures, which is how I always played with them because at the time there wasn't a property associated with them. So while they were cool to play with, I had no idea what they actually were. But in 1979, Marvel decided to take advantage of the toy line's popularity and create a comic series based around it. Now, I never knew anything about the comic series at the time, but apparently it involved humanoids and robots that lived in a microscopic series of diverse habitats that were linked together in molecular chains. <laughs> that seems to be the case with the new series also. Here we meet cargo hauler slash smuggler Oz and his crew who take what they think will be an easy job, only to have it go sideways. Now, I like this first issue for the most part, um, but I definitely felt like there were parts I didn't get. I'll give it another few issues to hook me and maybe read up a little on the backstory. Now in this issue, there was a preview for a new comic series called Satellite Falling. Now Satellite Falling tells the story of a lone human bounty hunter who leaves her home planet after losing the love of her life and now resides on a satellite spaceport full of aliens. This brief preview was not only well written, it looks great too. So I'm looking forward to issue one coming out in May. Next up, it's Satan's Hollow issue number two. The tension builds as the search for the missing teenage boy continues. Meanwhile, Sandra finally gets a chance to look at the footage on the camera she found in the last issue and makes an interesting discovery. I like how the story continues to build in this issue, though the last panel had me rolling my eyes like, really? Really? Next, it's Irwin Allen's Lost in Space number two. In the last issue, Don, John, Will, and Robot were lost on a survey expedition, not realizing that an alien presence was controlling their every move. And this issue, the aliens amp up the tension. We also briefly get to see the Robinson women. Still no sign of Dr. Smith though. Oh, the pain, the pain. The awesome artwork combined with the story makes it feel just like an episode of the 60s TV series. Whether that's good or bad depends on if you're a fan or not. I like it. Next, it's Star Wars issue number 18. 
Now this is part three of the Rebel Jail story arc. Leia, Sana, and Dr. Aphra continue to fight for their lives as a mysterious presence takes over Sunspot Prison. Now I enjoy all the prison storyline, but the side story featuring Han and Luke almost feels out of place because it's so different in tone. But overall, I've really enjoyed this story arc, and I'm so looking forward to seeing how things play out in next issue's finale. And finally, it's Aliens Defiance Number 1. This takes place between the original Alien and Aliens, as you can tell because of a character that makes a brief appearance. <laughs> so the story centers on Private Zula Hendricks, who is sent on a salvage rights mission with a bunch of Wayland yutani security synthetics to claim a derelict spaceship. Now Zula is dealing with her own shit, so she really doesn't need what she and the android team find on this vessel. This was a pretty good first issue. You get right in the story and the artwork is nice. So I'll definitely be catching the next issue. Well that's it for this week's pool kiddos. Do the clickies and like the likeies and drop me a comment below. I'm thinking about doing a special video once I hit 200 subscribers. So let me know what I should do it on. So until next time, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs>